Welcome to worship. It's good to be with you and be able to gather in God's word together. A few announcements, as always, before we, we begin our time together in God's word. If you're on St. Paul's website, you'll again see the resources tab below this video. You can click that tab and you can pull up the worship folder so that you can follow along more closely during the service. Also, again, we are privileged to be able to have another children's message provided in that resources tab by His Puppeteers. As I'll announce again later, that comes later on in the service, and you can watch it during the service or whenever you would wish. But we're grateful to have that children's message. And finally, just a word of, of announcement is that we are excited to say that Tanner Wade has been called here to St. Paul's Lutheran Church in De Pere to be the assistant pastor. He received this call earlier this week from Concordia Seminary St. Louis, and we are just excited and delighted to be able to welcome him, the pastoral staff, and to be able to have him and, and Whitney continue to serve our Lord in the ministry together. So with those announcements being said, we begin our time in God's word with our opening hymn. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves, and the truth is not in us. Let us then confess our sins to God, our Father. Most merciful God. We confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. 
we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways. To the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God in his mercy has given his Son to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all your sins. As a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Alleluia, Christ is risen. be with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, merciful Father, since you have wakened from death a shepherd of your sheep, grant us your Holy Spirit, that when we hear the voice of our shepherd, we may know him who calls us each by name and follow where he leads. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you in the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. We speak together responsively, Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He restores my soul. He leads me in paths of righteousness for his name's sake. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Blessed, 
Glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 10th chapter. Jesus said, Truly, truly, I say to you, he who does not enter the sheepfold by the door, but climbs in by another way, that man is a thief and a robber. But he who enters by the door is the shepherd of the sheep. To him the gatekeeper opens. The sheep hear his voice, and he calls his own sheep by name and leads them out. When he has brought out all his own, he goes before them, and the sheep follow him, for they know his voice. A stranger they will not follow, but they will flee from him, for they do not know the voice of strangers. This figure of speech Jesus used with them, but they did not understand what he was saying to them. So Jesus again said to them, Truly, truly I say to you, I am the door of the sheep. All who came before me are thieves and robbers. But the sheep did not listen to them. I am the door. If anyone enters by me, he will be saved and will go in and out and find pasture. The thief comes only to steal and kill and destroy. I came that they may have life and have it abundantly. I am the good shepherd. The good shepherd lays down his life for the sheep. This is the gospel of the Lord. Again, I remind you that we have a children's message listed in the resources tab by His Puppeteers. You may pause the video and watch that now. Otherwise, we continue now with our hymn of the day.
grace, mercy, and peace be unto you from God our Father and from our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ. Amen. The text for our meditation is the words from John chapter 10, read to you just a few moments ago. I began my ministry in Sioux County, Iowa, a county which in those days claimed to raise more corn-fed hogs and more corn-fed cattle than any other county in the United States. Those farmers knew how to raise hogs and pigs and, and cattle. But a lamb processing plant opened, and that's really a euphemism for a slaughtering house for sheep. It opened in a town about 11 miles away. And the farmers all took a look at it and decided that since it was so convenient and so cost effective, they'd try raising a few sheep. So each one of them got a few sheep and put them out in the pasture, and at first the sheep prospered. They got fat, they had babies, they cleaned up the, the rows. Uh, it was all good. But as winter started to approach, the farmers realized that they needed to corral the sheep, to confine them, to protect them from the elements. And then things began to fall apart. At first they tried to drive the sheep the way they drove their cattle, but the sheep outmaneuvered them. And then they decided that they would lure the sheep and trap them, but the sheep were too skittish. And they all had to admit that they really didn't know very much about raising sheep. But they watched, and they saw what made the sheep tick, and they learned one very valuable lesson. Sheep don't want to be chased. Sheep want to be led. Sheep don't want to be chased. They want to be led. And people like us don't want to be chased. We don't want to be trapped. We don't want to be lured by false claims. We want to be led by a good shepherd. Because it seems to me that there's so much leadership that's failing in these days. I'm not talking about any particular person or any particular party or government official. I'm simply saying that there is so much uncertainty and so much confusion that people don't know what to believe or who they can trust or who they should follow. And so in today's lesson from John tap, chapter 10, Jesus talked about the kind of leadership that we are looking for, the kind of leadership that we need. Yes, we need a good shepherd. And he offers himself saying, I am that good shepherd. History is filled with stories and accounts of all kinds of leaders. Some have been very good leaders, servant leaders, who have sacrificed themselves for the welfare of those who follow. But there are so many, many more accounts of leaders who, who tried to lead for selfish and ambitious reasons. Today, this, the news is full of stories of dictators and regimes who manipulate the truth, who abolish all liberty, who threaten and bully in order to gain power and control. There are stories of business leaders who ruthlessly destroy the competition, who bankrupt their companies and then destroy the lives of their investors and their employees in order to improve their bottom line. And there are accounts of celebrities promoting all kinds of goofy ideas and sinful causes in order to sound so relevant and to satisfy their deep down need for fame and fortune. Jesus would call them all thieves and robbers who only come to steal and kill and destroy. He spoke those harsh words to a group of Pharisees who were the self-appointed spiritual leaders of God's people in those days. Just prior to this in chapter 9, he had healed a man who had been born blind, but he would performed this great miracle on the Sabbath day. And so rather than rejoicing with him, the Pharisees called the man in and interrogated him closely and determined that he didn't know anything. 
And so they cast him out. They excommunicated him. And then they accused Jesus of being a fraud because he had broken the law. They used the law to keep people under control. And so it was in response to their blindness, their arrogance, their legalism, the way that they been abusing the people that Jesus said, you're thieves and robbers. But the Pharisees didn't get it. They didn't understand that Jesus was, in fact, talking about them. In the Old Testament, the Lord had harsh words for leaders of his people like them. Through Ezekiel, he said, Woe to the shepherds of Israel who only take care of themselves. Shouldn't shepherds take care of the flock? I'm against the shepherds, and I will hold them accountable for my flock. But then the Lord God promised, I myself will tend my sheep. And have them lie down. I will search for the lost and bring back the strays. I will bind up the injured and strengthen the weak. I will shepherd the flock with justice. And in John chapter 10, Jesus was declaring the fulfillment of this great Old Testament prophecy. He used a a figure of speech that they would have all been familiar with. He painted a, a verbal picture of a sheepfold a sheep pen it was a large enclosure with high stone walls and only one entrance one gate one way in at night the shepherds would bring their sheep down from the hills and lead them into the sheep pen in order to protect them and at the gate or the entrance there was always a gatekeeper a watchman who would give access to only the appropriate personnel to the sheep and the shepherd, but keep out the thieves and the robbers, the rustlers and the butchers. Jesus made the claim, I am the door. I am the gate for the sheep. I am the Lord God. Now, we all know that a gate is a a very simple device. It's either open or it's closed. Its purpose is to let in the shepherd and the sheep and to keep out the thieves and robbers. It's meant to protect those who belong from those who don't belong. And it grants access, freedom, for the sheep to come in and the sheep to go out. So Jesus said, I am the door. I am the gate for the sheep. Whoever enters through me will be saved. He will come in and he will go out and he will find pasture. The only way in which we can enter God's sheep pen, the only way that we can be part of the flock is through the gate. And Jesus is that gate. He is the Son of God. And by his death on a cross and his glorious resurrection, he became the gate by which sinful people like us have access to our Heavenly Father. I am the gate, he claimed. And he promises you the freedom to come in and to go out. We're reminded of a blessing that is spoken during our baptismal liturgy. It's a a quote from Psalm 121. As the sign of the cross is made, the words are spoken, the Lord preserve your coming in and your going out from this time forth and even forevermore. It's in that moment of baptism that Jesus claimed you to be his own. He made you a member of his flock and he set you free, free from sin free from all the worries and cares of this life, free from the terrors of death. As a Christian, you are the freest of all people. He said, I am the gate. And he promises you protection from all your predators, from the devil who prowls around like a roaring lion looking for someone to devour 
from the world around you, from your own sinful flesh, from all the thieves and robbers who come only to steal and kill and destroy you. I am the gate, he said, and I have come so that they, so that you might have life, that you might have it to the full. Think of what that means. Life to the full. It means much more than all the riches of this world. Life to the full is rich with forgiveness. And forgiven you have peace with God and peace with your neighbor and peace within yourself. Life to the full is a life with hope. Hope as you look to the future and beyond the future because Jesus, our Savior, has opened yet another gate. On Easter morning, the stone was rolled away from the, the gate, the door, the entrance to the tomb. Our Savior Jesus has conquered death and the grave, and he has promised life to all of us who live and believe in him. Jesus is the gate to heaven for you. Now, the Pharisees didn't have a clue what Jesus was talking about. So then he made it clear to them. In words that bring us so much comfort, Jesus claimed, I am the good shepherd. And he began to unfold the special relationship that he has with those who belong to him. He claims he knows his sheep. He knows what makes you tick. He knows your weaknesses. He knows your faults and your failures. He knows all the struggles and the foolishness that distracts you and the evil that you chase after. He knows all about you, but he loves you even still. He's the good shepherd who laid down his life for you. Unlike so many other leaders today, he made himself nothing. He took the very form of a servant leader. He humbled himself and became obedient. He sacrificed himself on a cross for you because he loves you so. In these days when we need something to believe in, someone we can trust, someone we can follow, we need only to look to Jesus. Our good shepherd leads us. He leads us. He doesn't try to drive his sheep. He leads. Years ago, there was a tourist who visited the Holy Land. And she was watching a man who was trying to drive a herd of sheep. He was goading them and beating them and cussing them. And finally, her curiosity was piqued. And she said to the tour guide, I was always taught that a shepherd leads his sheep. He doesn't drive them. Look at that man. He's trying to drive that flock. The wise tour guide looked at her and said, you're absolutely right. A shepherd leads his sheep. That man isn't a shepherd. He's the butcher. Jesus leads, and we follow him. A few moments ago, we confessed our faith using the comforting words of Psalm 23, written by a shepherd who became the king of God's people. David got it. And he confidently confessed, the Lord is my shepherd, as if to proudly say, I am one of his sheep too. And so are you, and so am I. We know our shepherd's voice. He speaks to us the truth of his holy word. We trust him. We know that when we get ourselves into trouble, when we wander out there on our own, don't know where we're at, our good shepherd is going to come looking for us, calling us back, picking us up in his arms, putting us on his shoulders, carrying us home rejoicing for sheep like us. It's always good to know that our good shepherd has promised to be with us always. 
And therefore, we follow him. He's always there before us. He leads us into green pastures, beside still waters, where we can eat and drink, relax and play and enjoy life to the fullest. And we follow him through the dark and the dangerous places. Sometimes down into the valley of the shadow of death. But we're not afraid because we know that our shepherd has been there before us. And he's come through the valley. Glorious and victorious. Just as we, his sheep, can confidently say, The Lord is my shepherd. So we can say the concluding words of that psalm. Surely, surely goodness and mercy will follow me all the days of my life. And I will dwell in the house of the Lord forever. For we know our good shepherd. And we know that's where the good shepherd is leading us. His sheep. In the name of Jesus. Amen. May the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, keep your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. Amen. As our confession of faith today, we intend to use the second article of the Apostles' Creed with the explanation written by Martin Luther. Would you please join me? I believe in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. And what does this mean? I believe that Jesus Christ, true God, begotten of the Father from eternity, and also true man, born of the Virgin Mary, is my Lord, who has redeemed me, a lost and condemned person, purchased and won me from all sins, from death and from the power of the devil, not with gold or silver, but with his holy precious blood, And with his innocence, suffering, and death, that I may be his own and live under him in his kingdom and serve him in everlasting righteousness and innocence and blessedness, just as he is risen from the dead, lives and reigns to all eternity, this is most certainly true. Let us pray. Blessed shepherd, guard us against all enemies of your word. And keep us within the care of your flock and staff forevermore. Lord, in your mercy. Mighty shepherd, grant to us good government and good leaders who will honor your purpose and protect your people. Give them wisdom and moderation in this this pandemic response. Lord, in your mercy. Loving shepherd, equip your church and your servants to speak faithfully and boldly your word. Especially equip and guide Tanner Wade to serve the people here at St. Paul's as he has received the call to be assistant pastor. Bless him and Whitney both as you use them to serve your church. Lord, in your mercy. Merciful shepherd, hear us on behalf of all those who suffer in body or mind, who grieve those whom they love and to whom death draws near. We pray especially for Jane Moulter and those we name in our hearts. Grant them healing according to your will, grace to sustain them in the day of trouble, and hope of the new and everlasting life to come. Lord, in your mercy. Gracious shepherd, send forth your spirit to rekindle faith in the hearts of those who have fallen away from the truth or who have been overcome by temptation and sin. Lord, in your mercy. Giving shepherd, move our hearts to devotion and teach us generosity that we may bring to you the tithes and offerings of a grateful heart and serve our neighbor in need with the resources you have supplied to us so abundantly. Lord, in your mercy. O great good shepherd, we pray you to hear your sheep and answer our prayers with mercy, granting us those things profitable for us and our salvation and keeping from us all things harmful, 
For you live and reign with the Father and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. The God of peace, who brought again from the dead our Lord Jesus, the great shepherd of the sheep, by the blood of the eternal covenant, equip you with everything good that you may do his will, working in us that which is pleasing in his sight. Through Jesus Christ, to whom be glory forever and ever. Amen. Alleluia, Christ is risen. Christ is risen. 